In this video, I'll walk you through a real-world inspection and repair of a fridge that wasn't keeping food cold. I'll go through a mechanistic view of how these devices work, and I'll show you the high points of what to look for when your fridge goes bad. So the problem today is a fridge that isn't keeping food cold. First I checked the door seals, and those were okay. And opening the door, the inside light came on, and I could hear the fans and the compressor operating normally. The first clue I got was the difference in temperature between the two compartments. The temperature in the main compartment was at room temperature, 19 degrees C, and the temperature in the freezer was almost normal at minus 16 degrees C. <laughs> okay, I gotta confess that I'm embarrassed about this next part. Just because you know something about maintenance doesn't mean that you're gonna come through as a responsible homeowner all the time. <laughs> well, with most fridges, the condenser coils are in the back, but to get better access, these coils are in the front. And look at all this dog hair pushed up against the coil. There's no airflow here. No wonder it can't pump heat. Well, I pulled the fridge out to get better access. You know, the old style coils were a lot easier to clean because they were mounted on the back of the fridge and they had a much bit greater surface area and so you could just pull the fridge out and vacuum it. Of course, nobody did that. So by putting the coil on the bottom, you have a smaller coil, but it's much harder to clean in the end run. So I'm gonna get some compressed air in there and blow it out and we'll see if that does the trick. Right, I'd like to get to the condenser fan to try and clean it better from behind, so I'm going to take off these screws, get this panel out of the way. Wow, look at all that dust. All right, well, let's identify some parts. A couple of things we see right off. First is it's really dirty, and I'm going to need to unplug it and then vacuum it all out. But the second thing is that's the condenser fan right there, and it's functioning normally. Now, just to help you identify parts, this, of course, is the compressor. And to tell which is the high side and which is the low side, you just touch the tubing. The high side is going to be hot. So this is the hot side. That's the cool side. So um, room temperature gas, freon gas, comes from the evaporator in the fridge to the compressor. In the compressor it's compressed and of course it heats up and this is heated compressed gas coming out of the compressor here. It goes to the condenser and I can see it going in there to the coils of the condenser. At the condenser it releases its heat and changes state to a liquid. From there it goes through an expansion valve which I can't see at the moment and then from the expansion valve it goes to the evaporator drawing in energy from the inside of the fridge to be drawn back uh, once it gets back to the compressor and the cycle repeats itself. So I've just unplugged it. You can see the condenser fan is slowing down and now I'll just vacuum it out safely. Okay, one other thing I'll show you while we're here is that these fridges have a defrost cycle where the fridge uh, warms up to get rid of frost in the freezer and fridge. And when it does that, it creates moisture, water that has to go somewhere and uh, they have a a, a tube that allows that moisture to drain and I'm pointing right at the tube right now and you can see it that tube goes down to a tray in there. Do you see the tray? It's all along the back. There's another view of the tray there that white thing and that tray uh, holds the uh, moisture and allows it to evaporate from the tray without causing rust or other problems and uh, if that tube gets blocked off then the fridge won't drain properly. You may end up with the lake of ice in the fridge in which case you've got to remove that tube and clean it out and allow it to uh, re return to normal. Sometimes they get blocked up just with ice. Just before we button this up, let's look at the compressor. Made in Brazil, interestingly enough. It's charged with 134A refrigerant, and its lock rotor amperage is 19.0 amps. Now let's look at the evaporator fan. To get at that, we need to pull the drawer out, so the easiest thing to do is just to get the food out of it. So to get the drawer out, you just pull a, the tray out like so. Now the drawer, and the drawer you just, there's a tab. You just push in on this tab right here, and then pull out, and then it slides out. Do that on both sides. So this is a cover for the evaporator. There are four screws here, and you can take those off. And the uh, evaporator fan is behind this thing, and you just pull it out. Let's see if I can do that without breaking the plastic tabs. There, these two tabs. You might be able to get at them with a pocket screwdriver and push them sideways, but there they are there anyway. 
I hate plastic clips. Of course, uh, the first time you try to get them off, you end up possibly breaking the tabs. I didn't break the tab, but look at this. So that's the way it goes. And there's a little printing here that you can see when you get it off. It said release, and there's a screwdriver. So you press the screwdriver in there, and you pry it that way. So if I turn the fridge back on, you should see that thing go, and you see the fan is running and I can feel air blowing so that evaporator fan is working fine. Now let me try and give you a view of the evaporator. You can actually see the coils in there and I see they're not all that iced up. And um, I can't get this uh, metal piece completely off because the ice maker is kind of in the way but I can pry it back for you so you can have a look. And you can see there the that's the evaporator there. You can see it's iced over a little bit. Well, here's a freeze frame of the evaporator fan. It's a simple shaded pole AC motor. Cheap and easy to replace if it goes bad. These motors have low torque, so it doesn't take much to freeze the fan blades. And when they do, the motor can make a humming noise. It's a safe design that rarely overheats, even when the rotor is locked. The shaded pole motors are everywhere in the home. They're in bathroom fans, pencil sharpeners, ovens, etc. If you're interested in more detail about how these intriguing little things work, search my channel for another video I've did of a failed oven fan motor. Now this little evaporator fan motor sitting where the red arrow points is the quarterback of your fridge. It circulates cold air around the freezer and it blows some of that air up a hidden bypass channel in the back, shown with the yellow arrows. At the top of the bypass channel is a little plastic door with a temperature controlled actuator that adjusts how much cold air spills into the main fridge. That's why fridges have two temperature controls, one in the freezer that controls a set point for compressor cycling, and a second that adjusts how much cold air spills into the main compartment from the freezer. Let me show you how the upper fridge temperature control works. The temperature control dial pulls a belt to rotate a dial on the door actuator. The belt has a tensioner that you pop off if you need to remove the actuator. To get at the actuator, you pull off plastic and styrofoam covers to show a rectangular hole through which cold air blows from the freezer. You can't see the door right now because it's presently laid flat and wide open. The arm of the actuator is that vertical white plastic arm holding the door down, and the spring beside it is pulling the door up. As the fridge cools, a bimetal strip inside the actuator lifts up the arm to allow the spring to pull the door closed. These actuators can go bad and they're replaced as a unit. The whole thing is held in place by plastic clips that allow you to easily pull them off. If you want to, you can also test them easily on the bench with ice and warm air. I actually pulled this one out and it passed flawlessly, although my clips didn't get recorded. Well, when I happily went into the room and told my wife the fridge was fixed, she gave me stink eye. Of course, she had her uh, mind set on buying a new fridge. In the end, I think what happened was that the dirty coil led to inefficient cooling, which led to rapid cycling of the compressor, and there wasn't enough gap between cycles to allow proper defrosting, and so there was inefficient air transfer between the two compartments. In any case, it's fixed now. The one regret I have is that I didn't do a proper maintenance here, and I could have saved about $100 of energy costs if I had done this sooner, and that has to be the number one message going forward. Thanks for watching.